Welcome back to My Matters. We're talking about how to successfully beat fibromyalgia with Dr. Fred Huey. So before the break, I wanted to discuss with you about how emotions affect our physical body. As a psychotherapist, I know I, have, I deal with a lot of people's emotions, mm -hmm. and they tell me often how they physically don't feel well. So I'm wondering, if you're, phys if you're emotionally not feeling well, how will that impact your physical body? Somebody, you're coming and you're treating them for the root of the problem, but if they can't let go of resentments or they can't let go of things, mm -hmm. anything, people, places, or things, how is that going to affect their physical body as you're treating them? Well, of course, if you have a strong emotion, uh, you have both uh, consciously and subconsciously uh, have a lot of disturbance. And then the disturbance, number one, would disturb the sleep. If you disturb the sleep, you don't produce endorphins in the body. Endorphins is a feel-good hormone. Yeah. And then the and look after physical, uh, feeling good, also look after pain. So if you don't make your own painkillers, the body feels aches and pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a classical experiment and they disturb some medical student over several nights and whenever they're about to go in deep sleep, disturb them, disturb them. In three days time, they all produce aches and pain. Mm -hmm. So your emotion disturbs the sleep and therefore don't generate endorphins. It also disturbs the hypothalamus which is the commanding gland that command a lot of hormone, and one of the hormone is the, the hormone to control and s stimulate the adrenal gland. Mm -hmm. So, uh, therefore, yes, it's important if people have a lot of resentment and resolve issues. And I so happen I heard that you going to have some show down the road on EFT. Yeah, it's basically correcting or re uh, reprogramming at the subconscious mind on uh, the way how you react and feel about past events and past trauma and clean up and uh, have a good uh, rebooting of the emotional system, I find that it helps a lot. And forgive yourself and others in your yeah. life. And that's, I think, the, the way to be happy. And one of actually the EFT uh, reprogramming is that even though I feel resentful about certain things, uh, even though I was traumatized, I, I will forget myself, I forgive, uh, you use that Forgiveness, word. I think, is the you, biggest. You suddenly, you uh, reprogram your emotional, psychological, subconscious. Yes, yeah, yeah it's important. Yeah. So thank you, yeah, it's great. Because okay. I do think emotions and the physical body have much to do with one another. Do you believe that we're in control of our own well-being, or if we go to a doctor that they can fix us or help us, or help us to change our, our thoughts, or well, is it us? Well, of course, uh, one attempt to, of course, you like to try to self-help, but if you're beyond the level of self-help and you need some external professional help, uh, you, if you look for the right person and right resources, yes, It can just trying, yeah. change your, yes. your thoughts in a moment's time. Yeah. It just takes that, it's the right place, the right time, and the right person t that can help you, because exactly. people yeah. can help us. So let's switch the category. Let's go right into to mercury and toxins and how toxins affect our body. Because mm -hmm. I know you're an expert at the, the toxins and mercury, so I'm really curious to hear what you have to say. Well, I do something called chelation therapy, which is uh, to clean uh, the body of the toxins, uh, heavy metal, mercury, lead, it's also used for uh, improving circulation classically for people with heart problem bypassing the bypass and or diabetic that have a rotten or rust up artery and to clean the arteries. But as to the area about heavy metal, uh, many people accumulate a lot of heavy metal over time. Example, the amalgam in the mouth. Uh, doctors say, oh, it's no problem. It's silver. The silver filling is actually mercury. Mercury mm -hmm. is the most poisonous thing there is. The nervous system is very much uh, get injured by mercury. And lead, uh, older people a lot of time are exposed to people, oh, uh, lead the gasoline, lead the paint. And uh, smoker that smoke in a lot, of cadmium is a heavy metal that also bind into the receptor in the brain. From smoking, you're saying? Yeah. So when you have a brand new computer, everybody send in a lot of junk mail, junk pictures. Mm -hmm. It occupied many of the relay station between nerves. A uh, between nerve, there's some jumping a neurotransmitter. If you block and occupy by a heavy metal, mm -hmm. that relay doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's like a computer with 
many of the junk mail occupying it, then when you try to Google something, it takes forever. That, that's what it's like you're saying when you have toxins in your body, mm -hmm. or metals in your body, yeah. like a computer that's overloaded. Overloaded it's with a lot of junk. With a lot of junk, it's like a block. Then you, the computer becomes it's slow, it cannot yeah. computate, or cannot computate correctly, mm -hmm. and then when junk, junk thing occupies your computer, you basically you have to clean you, it. You occupied up your whole software of operating software in the brain. But how do we humans get all this metal attached to us? It, mm. it just goes into the body, and, it, and I know metal doesn't leave unless you do chelation. Or yeah. how how else do you get metal, rid of it without chelation? A lot chelation? of metal is like high magnetic charge, and magnetic they stuck to a uh, certain area. Uh, the brain, they have many sulfur bonds, and mercury in many angles look like sulfur and they bond to many places they normally sulfur binds in and because of that once the sulfur bind, uh, mercury bind to that switch, that switch doesn't work anymore. So therefore normally you require a lot of these nerves to keep your self balance, keep your emotional balance and then so if a patient feel brain fog and uh, just foggy brain a lot of time of course, if they don't sleep well, they didn't charge a battery. But assuming even they try to sleep well, if still have problem, a lot of time I look into mercury. And uh, the way I do it, I give them one session of chelation, collect the urine and see what comes out. You bind a lot of these heavy metal using some uh, molecule uh, that we bind it. Mm -hmm. And once you see in the urine, we can analyze what is in your body. It's, uh, yeah, mercury, I know, but is it, can, does the test come out properly from the urine? Is that an accurate test? Yes. Uh, well, again, it's not a conventional test. We send to you uh, a lab, special laboratory uh, outside the, uh, the conventional system, but they'll analyze uh, the binding. These molecules will bind mercury, bind lead, and once it bind, it will come out in urine. We can measure how much molecule of urine uh, how much molecule of mercury are there or lead or there? Very interesting. Okay, we're going to come back to that thought. Mm -hmm. When we come back, more on how to successfully beat fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to My Matters. Tonight we're discussing fibromyalgia with Dr. Fred Huey. So let's go right back into chelation and tell me a little bit more about chelation. Well, chelation is a method uh, traditionally used, uh, discovered since the Second World War. Uh, it's found to clean circulation, uh, basically from a layman's term, like cleaning the pipes. Okay. And uh, so 
main indication being used is for people that have a circulation problem, block artery in the heart, people who have stroke in the past, people with hyperpressure. Hyperpressure basically is saying that you have wind tunnel effect, the piping is narrow, therefore the pressure becomes high, and uh, people have blocked circulation to the foot, and uh, especially diabetic, they got all the pipes rest up, and uh, circulation improved them, uh, return the circulation to a much better state. But chelation, I hear, is very, it's, it's a hard process for somebody to go through. Like, it's intense. You have to, there's um, a lot of uh, toxins that come out at the same time. So you're really, there's some downtime with chelation. Is there not? Mm, no, uh, that's what maybe the impression you may get. But no, this is done uh, professionally. And uh, we use, each time we leach a little bit. And you also have to replace back some of the minerals and uh, no, the patient don't feel unwell. No? Uh, it's gradual. People come for a series. It happens so gradually. But then uh, people feel, if anything, we also put in a lot of few good things. Mm -hmm. A lot of high dose vitamin C, a lot of minerals, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, nutrients. And people feel good with it. Yeah, and because then, they're getting rid of the toxins. But I was just thinking that when you get rid of the toxins, the toxins are sort no, of No, they are medicating things you put in. Example. In during chelation, we put in a lot of high dose vitamin C in the drip, and vitamin C bind off any loose pieces of mm. toxins, so people don't feel unwell with it. I see. If you just only bind without the internal vitamin C in the intravenous, people may feel, yeah, they may feel uh, just like a person sneeze more when you're vacuuming and they want more dust in the mm. air. But you put a secondary section in the air, such as vitamin C, and people feel good. We have to be careful though with all kinds of metals with you know, eating too much fish or the frying pans we're using, yeah. I would think. Tuna. Teflon, tuna, the Teflon uh, pans, right? Uh, Teflon pan, not particularly, but and, uh, people high iron, some people use iron wok. And, yeah. Uh, uh, there's certain people genetically have high iron, but uh, tuna. Tuna's tuna. high. And all the big fish, uh, mm -hmm. king fi kingfish and, and uh, swordfish, uh, the smaller fish, there's no problem. So if somebody has high mercury right now and they stop eating fish completely, can they lower their mercury levels? Mercury, once you enter the body, they never leave. That's a problem. Even if you're I doing intravenous with other oh, vitamins? No, unless you bind it. I, so but chelation without, will bind it away. No, let's say you don't do chelation and you're just doing, let's say, vitamin B and C and a mixture of that. Generally difficult to leave the mm. body. Very, they have high magnetic charge. They stuck the tissue and never want to leave. Hmm. The body tries to clean a little bit, uh, uh, excrete into the bowel juice, and then get back in the intestine, and then gut reabsorbed back in the body. And this can cause gut issues as well. It can cause all kinds of issues, toxins. Well, toxins can, can theoretically injure more many tissue, but the nervous system seems to be very more sensitive to it. So. Let's say you're low in vitamin B and vitamin D, which are pretty important vitamins, mm -hmm. and your gut is not absorbing them. And you find that you're doing tests on somebody who is low in these important vitamins, and they're not being able to absorb them into the system. Then what? What do we do then? Well, of course, uh, as a doctor, I will look into how to improve their absorption ability. And people are not breaking down. They don't have enough digestive enzyme or they may not have good bacteria in the gut to maintain the right environment, or they may not have enough stomach acid to leach the minerals of the food to mm -hmm. be absorbed. And of course, remedially, and in my office, of course, I give them, I can give them intravenous and mm -hmm. uh, to top it up and, uh, for those people. I yeah. see. That's, that's a good idea because I know a lot of people, they take a lot of vitamins and they're still not absorbing those vitamins. And no yeah. matter how much vitamins they take, it still doesn't absorb. So I'm just wondering if maybe it's a parasite in the body that just doesn't allow them to have those nutrients. Uh, yes, therefore a comprehensive physician, uh, integrative physician will look into those issues, the word why. <laughs> and that, another thing that I've heard of is colloidal silver that I hear is this wonderful substance, I don't know exactly what you would call it, that helps infections. Hmm. You have to take it very, small amounts, um, or I don't know how to use it. I've okay. never used it myself. I'm actually afraid to use it because there's a side effect that I hear that your skin can turn a bluish color. Yeah, uh, Oprah uh, show off somebody who have thick excessive. Now, 
at the That's usual. That's right. I, I saw it somewhere where someone turned blue. Yeah. And it, kind of, it freaked me out. That is, for somebody is a very obsessive person that drink uh, silver solution whole day long. Okay. Uh, I think, I guess you can intoxicate from just water alone. Uh, no. Uh, if you, if I keep colloidal silver, uh, I call them, they are basically silver particle suspended in very dilute amount in solution, and of course silver solution. And uh, I'll prescribe something like one teaspoon three times a day. Before we go on, let's explain maybe, sorry, because I didn't explain, what is colloidal silver? How, did, how would you use it? And then maybe like, what are the yeah. side effects or how would you? Colloidal silver is basically uh, inner silver suspend in solution in a very uh, low concentration. It's basically you buy from health food store, basically clear water, you don't see anything in it, but inside there, there is suspension of silver particle. And then uh, it is found to have antiseptic property. In regular medicine, we use silver, actually put in dressing to, as silver uh, to clean wounds. And then so, but uh, you can also actually ex internally take it in suspension because it's not patentable, it is not, oh, nobody have a patent on it. So drug industry, nobody owns it, and therefore it was never expanded into conventional medicine use. But it's powerful. Uh, uh, it is quite useful, I put it this way. Uh, it's a low, very low suspension of just a trace of silver. Mm -hmm. But the trace of silver clean germs. That's why older days, people use silverware to put food uh, to store the way because the silver will keep the germs away. Or if you use silverware to eat and to contain, it also clean germs. Great, we have to go to break, thank yeah. you. Okay. When we come back, more how to successfully beat fibromyalgia. Welcome back to My Matters. We're discussing how to successfully beat fibromyalgia with Dr. Fred Huey. So let's discuss how you can beat fibromyalgia immediately rather than the long-term relief that you're going to get. Mm. What can be done right now? Well, uh, fibromyalgia is actually it's a tough problem to start yeah. with. Like a ready-to-be-junk car, uh, already broke down in many areas. But I can think of the first thing is to good sleep. If you can improve sleep, it will recharge the battery better and the people feel immediately better. So I'd like to give a few tips to the audience of sure. how to improve sleep. Uh, number one, use an eye cover. Okay. Uh, block off light, uh, even five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, some light start coming in, it will disturb your own melatonin effectiveness in mm -hmm. the body. 
Some people born to have enough melatonin. As we get older, some people get less and less and less. So I love melatonin, cheap, in a, uh, inexpensive, accessible. And so uh, I tell people, start one tablet a night, two tablet a night, three tablet a night, until find the right level in which they wake up one morning, hey, hey, that was a good sleep. If they can recharge the sleep uh, using eye cover melatonin, that's a simple thing to do, accessible. Is uh, melatonin addictive? Is it something no. that your body will have to or will need? Not at all. It's okay. an own substance that your body produces. So you don't get addicted to it, to your own secretion. It doesn't have hangover. And also, it's not like a sleeping pill. Suddenly, without it, one night you don't sleep. You top up a reservoir when the reservoir is full. Mm -hmm. uh, even though you don't take it for many nights, the reservoir is still full. It'll keep you sleep. I, I love melatonin personally. Yeah. It, yeah. If I've ever not been able to sleep, I have a bottle beside my bed, and and I, I, I suggest like people it. use it even regularly because mm -hmm. it's anti-aging. Mm -hmm. uh, Susan Summer used <laughs> 20 milligrams per night as an advocate of anti-aging. The body thing, how old you are, depends how much melatonin you have. So I cheat. So I've been cheating <laughs> for the last 10, 15 That's years. That's why you look so good. So I take melatonin <laughs> every night. I top a few tablets. Although I have no sleeping problem, mm. I use it to tell my body I'm only 20 years old. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder, should I take it tonight, even take though it. I can't sleep? I'm, not, I'm unsure. Take it. It's if I wonderful. take too much, I'm groggy the next day. Uh, no, melatonin is supported by light. So even though you wake up, you're feeling there's some melatonin in the system. When lights hit your eyes, it will not work. Can children take melatonin? Well, children usually, the rest of us full. Uh, generally, I would not advocate that. Like if your child comes into your room and says, I can't sleep? Uh, no, usually it's not melatonin okay. problem. No. It's usually because they don't want to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just it's curious. The, it's the middle age and beyond and uh, people have. So one is sleep. Yep. And then uh, try to look out for signs of infections. And if you've got low grade fever, you've got chills, and here and there you've got flu, you got an infection. Mm -hmm. And try to search where the infection come from. Do you have any teeth problem? Do you have any gum diseases? Somehow they're not fixed. Is there ongoing gynecological infections? And then uh, maybe direct it to the doctors to say, I have this infection, can you help me? And then if it's simple bacteria, the doctor may be able to use antibiotic to treat it. Mm -hmm. But if it's not beyond, that's why fibromyalgia is tough using the conventional concept to treat it. Do you think probiotics, taking probiotics on a daily basis is necessity for a lot of people or some people? If people have chronic gut issue, I would like you to, because if the body, a normal healthy person have Doesn't good bacteria, it. they stay there forever, they'll populate itself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to take a journal. But people with gut issue, if no, you don't know what to do, reboot and reinstall the window, uh, seven program inside. Good bacteria is this type of Windows 7 program to put inside and regrow, mm -hmm. and they will establish what is the right acidity, right uh, alkaline and acidity, and it's a good thing to have. What about food? Some people say actually the gut is the second brain, mm -hmm. and uh, the body antidepressant and calming agent called serotonin, the gut produces more serotonin than the brain. Hmm. So if the gut is no good, uh, it'll disturb. So that saying, you are what you eat, it mm -hmm. really means something then. You sure. are what you eat. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And talk about food and they yeah. have a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. Fibromyalgic patients, they're low adrenal. These people tend to be what we call the cold type. Chinese medicine divides people in the hot type and cold. And I see a lot of people weak, fail, pale, cold, and they still keep eating salad as a main meal they will be as cold as iceberg lettuce. So it really makes a difference with you, what you eat with your circulation is what you're saying. And I'm trained in Chinese medicine and we pay attention to the type of food and the direction of the food. Therefore, uh, people are feel weak in cold hands, cold feet, you drink more warm soup, more warm water as opposed to cold drink and cold water and cold salad. That's interesting. I never heard that before, but that's yeah. a great tip. Yeah, it's Because often I have cold hands, cold feet, so that's... Yeah. In the winter, that is. Well, after yeah. you drink 20 cup of hot soup, you'll be warming <laughs> up. So if you do it every day, you lose money by taking cold drink and cold salad, you eventually become bankrupt. So if you, what if you have a salad and a tea? That'll work. At least you balance you it out. You balance off. it out. Yeah. 
And the whole Chinese medicine uh, talk about that a lot, mm -hmm. uh, the energetic. I want to ask you a, a personal question, if sure. that's okay. What do you get, or what have you gotten? You've been in medicine, I think we were speaking outside, you said for 40 years. What have you gotten in the last 40 years from your patients and from your studies as a doctor from your profession? I'm curious to know. Uh, continue to search for answer, continue to be open-minded, and there's lots of answers out there beyond conventional Western medicine. There exist many tools, and human has been, through history, tradition, yes, we we'll look for new discovery, but look back at the old way, there's a lot of wisdom in it. Mm -hmm. And you're continuously searching for the answers and the knowledge and... I love medicine. Just like a golfer, you always want to improve your golf score, and no matter how good you are, and medicine, the same thing. You always constantly look for good, uh, good tools and good methods, so eventually you feel the profession is much more gratifying fixing people and the patient also happy with it. Mm -hmm. It's your passion. I look at all my patients as if they were my relative and if this is your daughter, this is your father, you spend endless method, endless effort to try to look for answers. Yeah, for them. it comes from here. Yeah. So I want to thank you so much for thank being you. a guest today on My Matters. It's been very enlightening and you've taught me a lot and I'm sure you've taught the viewers a lot as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So before I wrap up the show, I'd like to share some insights. Fibromyalgia is a complex condition that's difficult to understand. Fibromyalgia can have an impact on virtually every part of the body. If you're trying to understand this condition in someone you know, it can be incredibly confusing. When a lot of people see a collection of symptoms that don't show up in medical tests, they decide fibromyalgia must be a psychological problem. A lot of illnesses involve one part of the body or one system. Fibromyalgia, however, involves the entire body and throws all kinds of things out of whack. As confusing as the varied symptoms may be, they're tied to very real physical causes. Fibromyalgia can take someone who is educated, ambitious, hardworking, and tireless and rob them of their ability to work, do daily chores, exercise, think clearly, and ever feel awake or healthy. The hardest thing for patients, however, is having to live with it. Having the support and understanding of people in their lives can make it a lot easier. Well, that's it for Mind Matters. Don't forget to love and approve of yourself. I'm Stacey Dombrowski. See you next time on Mind Matters. Thank you.